It's time now for an in-depth look at the markets on this Monday, and for that I'm joined on the line by Dr. Huang Seun, research fellow at the Korea Capital Market Institute. Dr. Huang, thank you for coming on today. Thank you for having me today. So we ended last week with U.S. stocks up again, the S&P at another all-time high. Here in Korea, though, stocks starting the week sharply lower. What's the story today? On, in Wall Street, stocks ended higher Friday after strong earnings from tech giants like Alphabet and Intel and a better-than-expected GDP report pushed the S&P 500 to a new all-time high. The S&P 500 gained 0.75%. The Nasdaq also hit an all-time high, rising 1.1%. More than 40% of S&P 500 companies have reported quarterly earnings for the second quarter. Of those companies, 76% have posted a stronger than forecast profit. Strong U.S. GDP data added rising momentum as well. The U.S. economy expanded by 2.1% in the second quarter. Asian stocks dipped at the start of an event field week as investors remain pretty cautious over trade disputes and corporate earnings. The biggest decline was in South Korea on earnings concerns. The benchmark KOSP dropped 1.78%, while equity benchmark in Japan, Nikkei, slipped by 0.19%. Now, we saw President Trump is trying to shake things up again in global trade, this time calling on the WTO to stop describing countries as developing if their economies are strong. This is aimed at China and several other countries, including South Korea. Where is he going with this? U.S. President Donald Trump threatened to withdraw recognition of the special developing country status of relatively rich countries, including Singapore, China, and South Korea, at the World Trade Organization, unless changes are made to the body's rules. Developing country status in the WTO allows governments longer timelines for implementing free trade commitments, as well as the, the ability to protect some domestic industry and maintain subsidies. The Trump administration has long complained that WTO rules are unfair to the U.S. and viewed WTO rules as unable to rein in China's trade practices. If the Trump administration moves forward with steps outline, outlined in the memo to stop treating certain countries as developing country economies, it would likely be another move toward essentially ignoring some WTO rules. And this will put more pressure on China for the U.S.-China trade negotiations. Now, you mentioned some caution among investors. This week, we'll see the much-anticipated meeting at the Fed when there's a consensus pretty much that it'll cut interest rates. Uh, we also have the latest round of trade talks between the U.S. and China. Uh, give us a look at the week ahead. This week is filled with important events to which investors pay lots of attention, featuring unexpected Federal Reserve interest rate cut, the resumption of U.S.-China trade talks, and further corporate earnings releases. Investors, investors await a potential rate cut from the Federal Reserve this week. The Fed is scheduled to start its two-day monetary policy meeting on Tuesday. An announcement on rates is set for Wednesday. U.S. and Chinese trade negotiators will meet in Shanghai this week for their first in-person talks since a G20 truce last month, but expectations are low for a breakthrough. Investors are skeptical about the prospects of a broader agreement that includes the more challenging security-related issues. Release of earnings report on the S&P 500 companies will continue this week on. Earnings calendar shows such companies as Apple, Qualcomm, General Electric, Verizon, and ExxonMobil will release their earnings report this week. 
All right, Dr. Huang, that's where we'll have to leave it today. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you.